Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to church this morning, and welcome to those of you that are joining us from, ho ho from home or wherever you are in the world. A uh, very warm welcome. Uh, please be seated, because there's quite a few notices this morning. First of all, just to let you know about the services this coming week. As you know, Lent starts on Wednesday, and it's Ash Wednesday on the 14th, which is this Wednesday, and there's a service of Holy Communion here at 7 o'clock. So please try and come to that service if you can. The service is next week at 11 o'clock, it's morning prayer, and at 6.30, it's vestry praise. The next prayer and supper will be held at the Vicarage on Monday the 19th of February and that will be at 6 o'clock. Please could you put your name at the list of the back of church so it falls aware who's coming. Thank you. Uh, and there's also the new Lent course will be running during Lent which will start on Tuesday the 20th of February at 7.30 and this will be for five weeks from then on at Jonathan and Sarah's house. So if you don't know where Jonathan and Sarah live, Jonathan and Sarah just give away for those of you that don't know you, if you have a word with Jonathan and Sarah afterwards and you'd be most welcome to that. Uh, Paul has also put at the back of the church uh, some Lent devotional books, Journey into Freedom, Journey to Freedom, and this is a daily, daily resource for prayers and readings. So, so please take one if you'd like one. But also, some really good news, I love this, and this is why I brought my phone, I don't usually bring my phone to the front of church, but there's actually a new app. The Diocese of Blackburn have got ahead of the times now, and they've got an app called Fruitful. And within that app, there is this, the whole of this, Lent courses on there and also for those of you that are unable to make the Tuesday evening courses at Jonathan and Sarah's it's, it's actually the Bishop of, of Blackburn that is actually on the video it features him talking during the course and it's all available on the app so you can't miss out it's all on the app and the app's brilliant I, I downloaded it this week it's also got an audio bible on it for those of you that like to listen to the bible in the car or wherever there's a full audio bible on it there's lots of resources it's really it's so easy if you need a hand if you'd like to download it and want to i want to see it before you download it i've got it on my phone speak to me at the end of the service and i'll, I'll talk you through it but i'd certainly recommend it the other thing is the charity shop is the 21st of March. I know it's a month away yet, but if you do have anything for the charity shop, if you either let myself or Kath Shipley know, and we can arrange to collect it or where, we go, where we're going to put the stuff, so that would be really helpful. And as it's Lent, starting on Wednesday, our Christian Aid Lent lunches will begin the following week, and the first one, it is a change of date, is at my house which is on Friday the 23rd of February. If you don't know where I live, please let me know and I'll tell you where, where to come. I know most of you do, but please, please and, and all are welcome for that. So, we'll start our service by singing our first hymn, which is hymn number 394, Jubilate Everybody. <laughs> And now we will take our morning prayer service sheet. But first, some words from Scripture. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, 
continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give us the joy of your saving help. And sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, sitting or kneeling as we pray. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And now please be seated for our first Bible reading. This morning's re New Testament reading is from uh, Paul's letter to the Colossians 2, 6 to 15, and can be found on page 1183 in the Pew Bibles. Freedom from human regulations through life with Christ. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In him, you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of them triumphing them over them by the cross this is the word of the Lord, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. we shall now stand and sing our second hymn which is hymn number 554 peace is flowing like a river
please be seated for our second reading. The second reading this morning uh, is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 27 to 30. After Jesus had healed a blind man at Bethsaida, he and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say you're John the Baptist, others say Elijah. And still others, you're one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? <coughs> Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning. Morning. Morning, Morning at home. It's good to see you. Um, so, very short passage from Mark. Thank you very much for reading. Um, you will not be surprised to hear that I am going to be asking, who do we say Jesus is? Um, is he a prophet? Is he a good man? As some people say, do we believe him to be the Messiah? The saviour prophesied in the Old Testament that would come and totally change things around and start a new order. Not in the way that some thought with an army, but with a death and resurrection that brings our forgiveness. And in the great traditions of the church and the faith and Jesus and Paul, I thought we could do this through a little bit of imagination. Mm. <laughs> Worried. <laughs> okay. If you imagine, if you will, a puppet with strings on the hands and feet, the strings at the top are attached to a cross of wood, two pieces of wood which are nailed together in the middle, that sort of thing, and someone's holding the cross of wood at the top, the person who controls the puppet. Everybody with me? Good. Not so bad, is it? So, who is the puppet and who is the puppeteer? Sometimes I think some of us maybe try and use God as the puppet. Some sort of magical superpower that we turn to when things go wrong. I must admit, I'm guilty. I probably pray a lot more when things are going wrong than when things are going well. Is he some sort of supernatural being that we can call on at will? A God that is someone to control and put away till Sunday? Certainly not. The one true God that created everything on earth, flung stars into space, saved us from rejection from heaven by the sacrifice of his son. No, all-powerful, awesome, mighty God is not a puppet. He cannot be contained as the Holy Spirit blows where the wind, as the wind end a sentence, bad intonation. Is God a puppeteer? Are we the little puppets, the playthings, the little toys of an all-powerful God at his whim, held with strings to his will? No, because we have free will. We choose whether to follow God or not, how much to follow God or not. But that's a talk for another day. Let's cut those strings now. Imagine the strings on the puppet. Cut them away and throw them away. God does not tie us down. He is not a puppeteer. God wanted to walk and talk with Adam and Eve in the garden. No, God sets us free. Which is a strange phrase when you're not a Christian. Looking in on the faith... From a non-Christian perspective, you think, really? Free? You go to sun, you have to go to church every Sunday. I mean, what's that all about? 
and you have all these rules, you have all these commandments. It doesn't sound very free to me. So let's work on that a little. It is a strange idea that by following someone else, we are somehow more free. So how are we free? Let's explore the faith in Jesus, and if the Spirit moves us, when, when we first become a Christian, we have a choice, don't we? Do we ask questions, talk to someone who we know is a Christian? Do we go to an event, maybe? Have a look at a Bible? In the early days, we can see how we make our own choices, but we still do. So what are we set free from? when we follow Jesus in two ways our puppet now is free to look around they can see some things that are still attached to them these things these strings lead to bags or boxes this baggage can hold the person down it doesn't ground them like the firm roots in verse 7 mixing my metaphors like Paul Let's open a box. Oh, there's that thing I did when I was young that I can't quite forgive myself for and I still think about it in the middle of the night. It's too late to fix it, though. There's those horrible thoughts in another one. Those horrible thoughts that I feel and I know it's because I'm feeling low. But I can't stop them. Oh, and there's another one, another box. It's all the work that I should do, but I can't find any more hours in the day. All the, the things that I want to do, that I do do, but shouldn't. The baggage we all carry around with us. When we turn to God, he can cut those strings too. He can cut the strings of our baggage. Sometimes it's hard to let them go. And as we all know, we don't automatically all get perfect as soon as we turn to God. And it's true throughout history we can see Christians and we can see the disciples in the Gospels. They didn't immediately leave their fishing nets and become perfect. So we're in good company if we're not quite perfect yet. We have a choice as to how much of that we give to God. Sometimes it's hard to let things go. The freedom that's promised Sometimes we hang on to it. Secondly, we have the bonds and the solidarity or the ties that we forge with things in this world. This is where Paul's letter to the church in Colossae, or Colossae, a city in an area that's now in Turkey, comes in. They lure people in to other philosophies that can harm them. And just because we are Christian does not mean we are immune to this. Sadly, we are more of a target for the enemy because we have the potential to do so much for God. We can get in the devil's way so much. Why wouldn't he try and stop us and lure us away? And we can be a danger to ourselves with this subtle pervasiveness that, of man that's around us and traditions even that become tradition in our own churches, not traditions from the gospel or the early church, but traditions that are built by man. Not all traditions are bad, obviously. Some help us to focus on God but some are made by man to control, and we have to be careful and discerning which ones are which. 
Paul knew that the Colossians were being tempted by a particular synagogue of Jews near them. And we know now with the benefit of hindsight that we don't have to be circumcised to become a follower of Jesus. If you're a man, obviously. Um, but at the time, this, this Jewish synagogue was saying, no, if you want to be a Jew, if you want to follow God, you have to do this. But Jesus took all that away. There is a baptism with the Holy Spirit now. A washing away of our baggage, cutting those strings that doesn't have to be done in a physical way. It can be done with baptism, a washing away in a symbolic gesture of an inner process. So in our new life, our freedom, our forgiveness, we are free to look around at the rest of creation and see where God wants us to help. And we start our new life, one that involves navigating our way with most of our strings hopefully gone, being God's hands and feet in the world that seeks to take us captive. Gosh, when you put it like that, it's a bit like a Mission Impossible film. Your mission is to seek out and help the people of the world without the evil, whatever it is, set to trying to pull you in. Or maybe I just watched too many films. <laughs> After all, we live in a mostly secular country. In this country, it's different in other countries where Christianity is growing and flourishing at an amazing rate. Christians in this country, sadly, you see it on TV all the time, we're seen at best as well-meaning, do-gooders, helping people. Well, they, they do good, so let them go on with it. At worst, maybe deluded fools, controlled by a patriarch patriarchal system that promotes inequality. And as often the case, the truth is probably somewhere in between, maybe. Is it because people and our worldly challenges may be slight, no, let me start that sentence again. People are people, that makes more sense. And even though our challenges are slightly different in different times, from biblical times, medieval, renaissance, now times, we are still people and we come up with similar challenges in our faith walk. So I would like to introduce St. Francis and St. Clair of Assisi. St. Francis here with these birds and these rabbits and these trees. You may have heard of St. Francis. Sadly, he has been painted as some sort of religious hippie Dr. Doolittle talking to the animals. And indeed, not many people have heard of St. Clair at all. And I recommend them both and their writings to everyone. What they say speaks to us in so many amazing ways. The church that they had around them at the time, not all of the church, but many of the monasteries especially, were built on greed, corruption, the selling of God's favour. Not a good institution. But they came to Christ in very different ways and living at the same time in the same town they became friends both strong and courageous people that stood up to worldly traditions and the philosophies around them they both came from a background of worldly privilege claire was set up from a very wealthy family she was destined for a good powerful marriage a life of comfort and privilege francis wanted to be a knight a real lad. He liked to drink, he liked to party, he liked to wave his sword around. You can just imagine him outside Weatherspoons on a Friday night, can't you? <laughs> really. He ended up in jail, sadly, and then took time wandering, physically repairing churches in the area. And he did come to God. The spirituality of Francis, though, was rooted very much in the Bible, in the teaching of Jesus. It was very different to the dominant church of his time. And Claire left her own privileged life, finding encouragement in the writings of Francis. She started 
a women's section of his monastery. Didn't go to the convent. I didn't know this. This is strange, isn't it? She started a section of the monastery, very much along the same Franciscan lines, in the same monastery, in the same town. They were real groundbreakers, really, weren't they? <clears throat> they were very different to the other people around them. The society, full of consumerism, greed, challenges, sounds very familiar to us, doesn't it? In their own ways, they rebelled against the parts of the church at the time were corrupt and encouraged the parts of the church that were good. Francis admitted that when he was younger, he looked down on lepers and despised them. But in his faith, he began to see that everyone was loved by God just the same. All of creation was loved by God just the same, even the rabbits and the birds. We are loved no more and no less. We can see from Paul's letters and people like Francis and Claire that navigating our way past the false idols of the world needs some strength of character, some discernment, and it needs God. We have scripture. We have Paul writing his letters, like this one to the Colossians. We have the Gospels that tell us about Jesus himself, and this is such a firm foundation to root our faith in. And we have the writings of people like Francis and Claire too. In a strange way, their history has been distorted or written out because other parts of the church seemed more attractive at the time. But their Jesus-focused theology, I think we can rely on, like we rely on the Bible. We have each other to encourage each other and lift each other up in a true faith. And we have a loving, freely chosen relationship with the one true God, who having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a spectacle, public spectacle of them, and triumphed over them by the cross. I didn't write down what verse that was. If we decide that Jesus is God, the one and only God, the Lord and Saviour, then be encouraged, my friends. Because we are free. Free from the chains and baggage of guilt as much as we can give them up. We are free from the hollow and deceptive philosophies of today. We are free to follow wherever Jesus leads us. Not because we have to, but because we feel compelled to. We want to. Any boxes left lying around... We can work on them with Jesus as we go. We can keep our relationship with the awesome creator God, not as a puppet, not as a, he is a loving, all-powerful, creative, caring, fixing things, practical kind of God that wants us along for the ride because he loves every bit of his creation equally. You, me, everything outside everything that needs help. This I am sure of because scripture tells us, Jesus tells us, as he told the people in Paul's time and Paul himself. He told the people in medieval times in the scriptures. He tells people all over the world today, including in our lovely church here at COP. Be encouraged because God is calling us, all of us, every one of us, as someone has as someone who has always hated to be tied down. I am free and I choose to follow. Friends, I encourage you to do the same. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Angie. And following on from Angie, our next hymn is actually the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Make me wow. a channel of your peace. Wow. <laughs> oh, why are you surprised? He is so good. Oh. <laughs>
And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious child, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the earth. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us turn to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Firstly, the collect for the Sunday next before Lent. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The response to the prayers is, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. Let us come into the stillness of the presence of God, leaving aside all our earthly preoccupations, our troubles and difficulties, the things that cause us hurt and anxiety. Let us seek the peace of God in our hearts and lives, the power of his spirit to enable us, the power of his word to guide us, his love to comfort and encourage us. Let us, see, let us seek his will for us, his purpose in our lives, the desire and ability to go out to others and serve them in the way he would have us serve. May none of us feel alone and inadequate, but know that with him all shall be possible, all shall be well. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Loving Father, we give you thanks for the church, for its teachings and fellowship. We pray that we may always come before you with reverence and awe. We remember all who are called to share in the shepherding of your church. And we pray for all bishops, priests, deacons and lay readers. We thank you for all who have shared their vision and insights, for all who have shared their awareness and love for you. We pray for all who seek to proclaim the good news of the gospel. May all who are involved in ministry reveal your love and your saving power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, as we remember with sadness the horror of, horror of war, help us to work for a better understanding between races and nations. Forgive us our pride and divisions and renew in us the search for peace so that trust may replace suspicion, friendship replace fear, and your spirit of reconciliation be known among us. We pray for leaders of nations and governments, for all in authority, that they may be wise and gentle in their dealings, that they may be caring and respectful of others. We pray for all who seek to relieve hunger and suffering, for those who seek to help people rise out of their troubles. And we remember before you, Father, the work of the United Nations, the World Health Organization, Oxfam, CAFR, and Christian Aid. And we pray for the peacekeeping forces and all who work for the well-being of others, praying especially for those whose lives are in danger. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving Father God, we ask that we may come to know your presence and power in our lives, in our homes, and in our places of work. Lord, as you have opened for us the gate of everlasting life, help us to live life to the full. May we help others to extend their lives and their vision. Bless our homes and our loved ones with the fullness of life. Be with all those who travel, especially Andy in Japan and make us useful members of the communities to which we belong. Lord, in your mercy. 
Loving Father, we bring before you all who have had a hard week this week and all who look in fear towards the future. We pray for those who have been awake all night and are weary and worn, for the over-anxious, the depressed, the dispirited, and for those who are ill or suffering, and for those caring for them. And we remember before you in a moment of quiet our friends and loved ones with special needs and hope. And at this time we pray especially for Helen, and we pray for His Majesty King Charles and the Princess of Wales. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we rejoice that you lead us through the valley of the shadow of death and offer us life eternal. We give thanks that you will seek us out and bring us safely home. We pray for those you have enfolded in the love and peace of your kingdom, that you will keep them in life and joy everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. And as we start another week, fill us, Father, with the power of your Holy Spirit, that in all we do or say, we may show forth your love and proclaim the good news to all we meet. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we shall stand to sing our final, which is our offertory hymn, Hymn number 417, Lift High the Cross, the Love of Christ Proclaim.
offer this to you in love for your work here on earth and the extension of your kingdom and the knowledge of your love throughout the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. As we take our worship, praise and prayer from this place into our daily lives, may our lives be sustained through the love of our Heavenly Father. May we feel the presence of our Saviour walking beside us and know the power of the Spirit in both our actions and our words. Amen. Amen. And let us pray for each other in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.